it. I think what I'm glad that you mentioned the national actually for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think what I might do is actually pitch them on a show sponsorship at the national, but I'm, but I'm also like uh, figuring out my national plan. Right. So I think we all need to be figuring out our, our, our plan for the national right now. And I think a lot of what we're going to talk about on today's show is all in regards to the national, because I sort of see it as a turning point for me. Uh, I think that everybody should see it as a, like a turning point for the year. It's almost like a year end, the year beginning type of situation in a lot of ways. It'll be my first one, but what I understand about it is that it's sort of a time to sell and reset and reinvest. Um, and based on the time of the year, it could be better for people in uh, buying particular sports than others. Um, you can comment on that if you want. But um, yeah, my whole, my whole uh, thought process right now with everything I'm doing is all around uh, trying to be successful or put myself in a position to succeed after July 2022 based around like being at the national. So trying to be smart about what I ship to myself from my vault, what I do with it, um, what I take to the national to try to sell, what I try to sell online before the national so that I have money to maybe buy something. And if so, what is that going to be? So I'm kind of uh, all consumed with my national strategy. My whole entire sports card investing strategy right now on uh, May 23rd, May 24th when this show airs is, is like, what am I doing for the national? So um, any comments on that before I, before we get into more NBA? Uh, I think the national is a great place to buy. Uh, it's not always a great place to sell. Now, now it can be if you have the right cards or the right dollar amount of cards, you know, like, no one's interested in buying, you know, probably sub hundred dollar cards at the national, you know, there's a bazillion people there. If you're like, Hey, you buying or like, if you walk up to a thing, the guy has your attention for like half a second and you're like, Hey, are you guys buying? They're like, yeah, let's see what you got. And you see it over and over and over at these national booths. They're like, yeah, let me see. You hand it to them. And it's like a PSA nine fourth year LeBron. They're just like, no, nah, man, I, I, I no. And then they just, you know, but like if you had like a, um, a Russell Wilson uh, booklet auto, like they're buying that, you know what I mean? So it's like, it depends on what level of, of card you have. Um, but there's always going to be things at the national that you're going to want to look at and be like, holy cow, I could never see that anywhere else. Um, another thing that's kind of strange or not strange, but kind of cool is like when you go to local shows, it's typically all like, you know, like for me here, it's all basketball. All anybody cares about in Kentucky is basketball. Um, and then there's football cards, but there's hardly any baseball and there's never any soccer and I'm never any F1, never any UFC, you know, like, um, but like when you go to the national, it's like, I would say 50%, if not more of the like vendor booths are vintage. Okay. So, um, like there's like just tons of vintage cards. So, um, I didn't expect that and I'm not really a vintage collector either. So, you know, I was walking around and I could see a bunch of really cool stuff, but like that's half the booths that I'm not engaging with. But the part, the yeah. point of me going to national is I love making those connections of people that I'm going to get in the, be in the same room with once a year, you yeah. know? And so like, that was really big for us last year. Um, had a conversation with the CEO of Beckett, had a conversation with the CEO of Leaf, uh, met the loop people, which now I'm a loop breaker, you know, so that was a good connection. Um, the sports card investor guys are there. Jimmy from Kentucky Roadshow is there. I, I get to meet, I, I know Jimmy like personally because we both live in Lexington, but like, uh, but he's a big guy that you want to meet there. And he's a guy that you want to talk to. PWCC is there, eBay's there, Tops is there, Panini's there. You know, so it's just like, it's kind of crazy. So I think, I think uh, my national strategy is going to be uh, business development to your point. Sorry, sorry, audience, if this is boring to you guys, but I think it, it could be relevant to you because I'd like to have some, I'd like to have some more people on the show with us. 
And so I'd like to go around to meet all the people you just mentioned and more that are businesses in, in the hobby and, and try to just line them up as guests on our, on our show, you know? Oh, absolutely. And if there's anyone that you, if there's any, anyone that you audience want to comment on that you'd like to hear from, uh, I have no fear when it comes to approaching people from a business development standpoint. I don't like to, this is funny. Cause like, I don't like to talk to the parents at my son's baseball games. Uh, I like to like, well, well they also only speak Spanish. So yeah. that's good. That's true. They all, that is a barrier for me, but even, <laughs> even in the United States, uh, I never really was one for chit chatting with the other parents, but I do like business development. It, it kind of is my thing. So I'll go, I'll go talk and, and try to get some people on the show that you guys are interested in. And um, yeah. And I think like, it's interesting what you said. I mean, my, <clears throat> my strategy I think is going to be, and this could change, but I think I'm going to look for Giannis autos Oh, they'll be there. There's Giannis stuff everywhere there. <laughs> that I don't. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think I'm going to try to move out of some things so that I can move into some, some, thing, some things like Giannis autos that, um, and I may bring like my Pedri autos to the show. You know, I may bring some F1 autos to the show that I have because um, while those things are popular, uh, I've heard that they're not always plentiful at shows like the national this year yeah different, but you know soccer soccer autos of guys like pedri or even just mbappe slabs i mean they might be people might might not be interested in those i get it but but if there's not a lot of soccer and there's not a lot of f1 um represented at these shows at, at the national specifically if 50 percent of the vendors are traditionally have been vintage well then there's definitely not going to be much soccer in f1 uh, yeah i can really only re i can't think of any f one booth that I saw and I can I can think of like maybe four or five soccer only booths so yeah I mean and the only card I bought last year from the floor was a, a Fati card I bought a PSA 10 Fati when I was there so yes you know I love Fati and actually quick shout out I wanted to mention this on the show so this is perfect you and Trey Calvin at FC Cardboard on Twitter, and you are at Lefty McKee on Twitter. You guys uh, did an amazing job on the Soccer Card Strategy Show episode three, which is out now. Check it out on the Sports Card Strategy feed on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. You guys talk a lot about uh, everything really in that half an hour quick show, but it's pretty power packed. And you mentioned my guy Gavi, and I did, it did make me happy to hear that uh trey also likes gavi um he he's a guy that not to not to um to take us too far off track here because i want to i want to scoot back to some some national stuff and then and then hit some basketball before we get into the rest of the show but um gavi doesn't have doesn't have any real investable cards yet you know like he I, will next month okay all right May 25th, man, that, that Chrome UEFA, UEFA is coming out and his Chrome UEFA cards are, I, I think I'm going to be searching those out. So yeah, if you're listening to this later in the week, it's already out. But if you're listening to this uh, right when it airs, oh, it'll, that's be, true. it'll yeah. be tomorrow, it's... it'll be tomorrow uh, because this is going to air, this airs on uh, Tuesday, May 24th. So if you're listening to it on May 24th, it's tomorrow. If you're listening to it on the 25th. It comes out today. So that's pretty exciting. Tops Chrome UEFA Champions League. And you're saying there's Gavi autos in there? Uh, Gavi investable cards, rather. Well, there are, there's Gavi, or Gavi cards in there, and they're going to be the Chrome variation. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know if there's autos. I'll, I'll look. You keep talking, I'll look. Check the checklist. All right. All right. So Kendall's going to look that up, and I'm going to run you guys through some stuff that I wanted to talk about that's relevant to my national strategy. And then Kendall's going to know enough about this to kind of chime in with his opinion. So, um,